in this video of oracle http server 12c we will learn about some basic concept of oracle ohs server which is also called oracle http server and then some uh, oracle http server topologies which is there in 12c version then installation path certain configuration files how we can start stop and then configuration directories so now there have been a major changes in in uh, the architecture of uh, ohs 11g and 12c okay so we will see what all are the changes uh, there so what is an oracle http server so oracle http server which also called an ohs is a web server based on the apache http server okay so it is a web server so what exactly is web server which is like used to hold certain kind of a static files like html files and sometimes it is used for the security purpose as well in front of your application server so basically in an enter enterprise world uh, we have a web server sitting in front of your application server like you have a oracle web logic server so that is used in front of your uh, web logic server for the security purpose because your business logic is completely uh, deployed on your application server so so no one want to uh, allow out, outside users to direct, directly connect with the application server where you have complete uh, your business logic is there right so for that reason uh, uh, there is a separate layer is created in front of your web logic server or you can say in front of your application server which is uh, you can say the web server so all the traffic that uh, that goes to your uh, application server it is via http server so there are two reasons for using web server one is for the security reasons and second is sometimes when you want to offload uh, this some kind of a load from your application server then you deploy the static contents on your web server and then your web server connects with the application server for business logic executions for example, maybe you have a certain HTML files, static HTML files, and then maybe you have a certain uh, documents, audio, video clips are there. So all those static contents you can place on the web server. And then when it comes to the execution of certain kind of a business logic, then you can deploy your code on your application server so that your web server uh, will connect with application server for the executions of any kind of a business logic. So from Oracle, okay, uh, 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 there are many versions of OHS, okay, earlier it was 11G and inside 11G there are many versions 11.1.1.0 starting from 11.1.1.0 to 11.1.1.2, 11.1.1.3 and then as of now currently the current version of OHS is 12.2.1.4 which is called 12.2.1.4 R2. So it is completely based on the open source Apache web server only, okay. So now when we talk about the management, so OHS 12C administration leverages the web logic management framework to provide a consistent administration experience with the rest of the fusion middleware applications. Okay, so what does it mean that uh, in 11G, or you can say till 11G, your uh, OHS was in system component, not Java component. So what does it mean? Java component is something that has been deployed on your applic Java based application server that is called a Java component. For example, you have a lot of middleware applications, SOA, Web Center, and then many applications are there, those deployed on your uh, uh, web logic server. And system component is something different, which is not completely based on Java. That means that has been developed in some other languages. So if you have a certain kind of experience in 11G, then I'm sure you are aware about that, how we start uh, the OHS instance in 11G, we use the OPMN uh, feature of the OHS server to start and stop the services, right? So all the services that we use to start with the help of OPMN utility, those all are, you can say, are the system components. That means they are not developed purely in your uh, Java language. They have been developed in certain other languages, okay? So now uh, from 12C onward, okay, so you are this, uh, OHS is leveraging uh, the complete functionality of WebLogic Management Framework. So WebLogic Management Framework is a framework that has been designed to administer system components like Oracle uh, HTTP server and rest of the fusion middleware applications, including WebLogic server. So that means now you have the feasibility where you can uh, start, stop, okay, and manage your OHS component as well using the WebLogic Management Framework features. And the OHS 12C administration now support administering one or more OHS instances running on one or more host that is called machine. So that means you can do the administration of OHS instances 
using the WebLogic admin console as well and using the WLST and other features that are available with the WebLogic framework. Okay, so that means user can get administer OHS using the management console, commonly referred as user middleware control. Okay, so you have a management console that comes with along with the management framework, WebLogic management framework. You can utilize that uh, to manage your OHS instance as well uh, from 12C onwards. So what are the Oracle HTTP Server 12C topologies? So there are two topologies in Oracle HTTP Server 12C versions. One is a standalone domain and second is called a WebLogic server domain mode or also called manage or co-located. So let us see the difference between standalone mode and then co-located mode. So when we talk about standalone domain mode that it has a directory structure similar to an Oracle WebLogic server domain, but it does not contain an admin server or manage servers. So standalone domain in the sense, you will have the features of WebLogic framework, but you will not have any admin console or, or you will not have any admin server or managed server there in the standalone domain mode. So that means when you are uh, going to install your OHS in a standalone domain mode, then you will still get a domain created for your OHS instances. Okay. And you can leverage some other more features of the WebLogic frameworks, like you can use a WLST, you can use a node manager, you can use the config wizard to create the OHS domain. You can use the pack and unpack utility to, uh, to pack and unpack uh, or, uh, your domain from one host to another host. But yes, you will not have the admin server, managed server, or any kind of a admin console in standalone mode. And when we say that the primary use cases for choosing the admin OHS using standalone mode that when users like to install OHS with a minimum footprint and dependencies and does not really need to administer OHS locally or remotely through a browser based admin console. Okay, that means uh, there are certain conditions where uh, we really don't need uh, 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 the feature of admin console to manage our OHS, specifically when we talk about uh, uh, the enterprise world where I, I as I said that uh, sometimes web logic uh, that OHS is used for security purpose in front of your web logic server okay so when we are installing just for security reasons in, in a separate instance or separate machine then we really no need uh, the complete web logic framework for the management of of your OHS instance right that that there you can only uh, install it in a standalone mode and then you can leverage the node manager or WLS to, to start and stop the instance at whenever required okay so you want to provision OHS in a demetrialized zone that is a zone between the internal and external firewall. So that means, as I said, that okay, we, you uh, sometimes we use OHS for the security reasons, okay, and we install it in a, a separate zone. That means that is called a demilitarized zone, okay. That is specific zone where uh, the connections from the outer world is allowed, and then from DMZ the connections are made to the backend application server. Now, OHS administration standalone domain mode. Okay, so what does it mean? So, how we uh, go for the installation of your OHS in the standalone mode? So, installation of standalone domain is very straightforward. You have to install the supported JDK version, right? And then you have to install the Oracle HTTP server. And when you are installing the HTTP server, you have to select the standalone HTTP server mode. Okay, you can see the red mark in, in the screen. Okay, and then once you will select the standalone mode, okay, after that installation, you have to configure the HTTP server using config configuration wizard. Okay, so if you are aware about that, uh, how we can uh, create a domain in WebLogic server, okay, there is a script called config.sh or .bat in Windows to, to configure the domain. So now for HTTP server, uh, for HTTP server 12C, okay, when you have installed the HTTP server in standalone mode, you can go to your Oracle common and uh, common bin directory, okay? And from there, you can start the configuration with that and then you can create a domain just like we create a domain for our uh, normal applications and for the WebLogic servers. Similarly, you can create a domain for the OHS as well from there. And once your domain is created, you can leverage the WLST command, okay? Or the OHS instance command that come with, with the OHS, okay? Uh, those you can use to start and stop your OHS instances. So basic flow is that when you try to uh, to manage your Oracle HTTP server instance, so WLST, you have to first connect with the node manager, okay? So once you are connected with the node manager, then you can issue the command to your Oracle HTTP server. Like you want to start and stop the HTTP server, then all the command will be issued from the node manager. 
Now, second is about your co-located mode. So this topology provides enhanced management capabilities through the fusion middleware control and management framework. That means in the second mode, co-located mode, the, you can install the OHS with the complete framework features and functionalities of your WebLogic server. Okay, that means in if you will install in a co-located mode, then you will have the features of admin server, then you will have the features of managed servers, and you will have an admin console as well, which was not there in the standalone mode. Okay, so basically, uh, uh, when we install this OHS in the co-located mode, so, so for example, if we have uh, we are installing certain more fusion middleware applications like uh, SOA application, Web Center application, or IDM applications, okay, those are the fusion middleware products from the Oracle, okay, and all these products are deployed on uh, the WebLogic server. So uh, you can say it is completely deployed on top of your WebLogic server. Okay. So when we are installing these fusion middleware applications, so they may need uh, OHS instance as well to front end <clears throat> the uh, uh, the native applications. Okay. That come bundled with the middleware products. Okay. So in that case, you will have a domain where you will install your other fusion middleware products like SOA Web Center, and then in the same domain. Okay, in the same domain there, you can have your OHS instance as well. So basically you can use a co-located mode of installation of WebLogic <clears throat> of OHS server uh, when you have, uh, uh, or when you are going to install uh, some uh, fusion middleware applications as well. Okay, so the primary use case for choosing to administering OHS using WebLogic domain are you do not want OHS to front end fusion middleware domain. Okay, you do want. Okay, so that means you want to front end your fusion middleware applications. Okay, and then you don't need the management monitoring functionality provided by the browser based function middleware component. Right? So that means you need a browser based functionality. That means you need an admin console as well. Okay, and you are comfortable with installing WebLogic and OHS in the same installation location that is called co located. So, but as I said, there you have to install the WebLogic as an, an OHS along with the other fusion middleware, uh, middleware products. Right? So you have to be comfortable on that one. Now, OHS administration, okay, with the logic domain mode, it is called co-located. So how we go for the installation, that means first you have to install the JDK, similar to your co-located mode, or sorry, to, to your standalone mode, and then you have to uh, install the Oracle Fusion Middleware Infrastructure, okay, and then install your Oracle STTB server, and then you have to select the co-located mode instead of a standalone mode, right? And then once the installation is done, you can leverage the other WLST and node manager and all the features of WebLogic server framework to start, stop and manage your OHS instance, okay? So this is a basic flow of your uh, uh, connecting to your OHS instance, okay? With the help of uh, WLST and with the help of Fusion Middleware Control as well. So if you compare with the standalone mode, okay? So here on top of your WLST option, you will have a fusion middleware control option as well for managing your Oracle HTTP instance, right? Because we have selected the co-located mode and now it comes with all the features of your WebLogic framework. So you will have two options to manage your Oracle HTTP, HTTP server instance. One is with the help of WLST, just like uh, standalone mode. And second is you can control it or you can manage it using the fusion middleware console as well, right? <clears throat> now, when we start the uh, our, uh, OHS instance after the installation, okay? The process will start that is similar like to starting your admin server and managed server. You can go to inside your domain directory and inside domain, you go to bin directory. And inside that you will get a script called start component.sh or maybe better for windows. And then you can specify your OHS instance name to start your OHS instance, right? But it will prompt you for the node manager password every time whenever you will go to start your OHS instance. And you, if you want to skip uh, the prompting of that user name and password, not username exactly, it is password only. So for that, you have to do a certain kind of a configurations during the startup, okay? And that is called a store user config parameter, okay? So you can start your component as with the command shown in the figure, start component.sh and then space instance name and then space store user config. So what it will do is it will create two configuration files inside your home directory and then dot wlst folder there will be two configuration files okay it will be created automatically when you will run this command okay and then after that once it is done you later you can go and start your uh, ohs with the help of start component command 
okay and it will not prompt you for the password after that now the important files just like if you have some experience on apache that there you have a, a configuration file called httpd.com when some more uh, configuration files were there similarly in the ohs as well you have three important configuration files inside your instance home okay httpd.com ssl.com and second third is mod wlohs.conf so these all files are there for the uh, for the configurations of web server with the backend application servers okay so now another another concept that has been incorporated in your 12c is about the staging directories and the runtime directories that means uh, if you have some experience of oracle uh, 11g http server or maybe you have certain kind of experience of uh, apache web server okay there you can uh, if you want to do any certain kind of configurations okay you directly go to and uh, update the http.com file or maybe some other configuration files and then you have to restart your apache server or maybe your ohs instance in 11g okay but in 12c uh, this is not the case, okay? So, so here you have uh, two directories with the same set of configuration files. One is called the staging directory and second is called runtime directory, okay? That means if you wanted to do any kind of a change in the configurations of your HTTP server, okay, then you have to update that configurations in your staging directory. You should not update any configuration directly in your runtime directory, okay? So you will have a same set of configuration files in both the directories, okay? So but the process is that if you wanted to do any kind of configuration change then you have to first make changes in your staging directory okay and then you have to restart your ohs instance it will directly reflect in your runtime directory as well after the bounce but if you will not change the parameters in your staging directory and you will directly update in a runtime directory then after the bounce the change will not be there okay it will not reflect in your configuration file they will be removed automatically if you will do any changes in the runtime directory okay so the best practice or you can say the recommended way of the configurations in your ohs 12c is that you have to update the file in your staging directory and then you have to bounce the ohs server and then the content will automatically reflect in your runtime directory okay so for example if you have created an ohs domain and the path is oracle config domains and ohs underscore domain then inside that domain you will have two directories one is called staging directory and the path for that is inside your domain config fmw config components ohs and then your instance name ohs instance name that you have given during the installation time installation and configuration time and the runtime directory will also be inside your components and ohs but inside a folder that is with name instances okay so here ohs one is the instance name so if you wanted to do any kind of a configuration change in your ohs then you should change the parameters in the files, those are there inside your staging directory. You should not touch any file which is there in the runtime directory. Thank you for watching this video. And if you think this is uh, useful for you, then you can subscribe for my channel as well. Okay, And uh, I will come up with a few more videos shortly. Thank you very much.